So this was just a nice image that I used to try and remember it just to get the test the right way around because that can be the key to answering the question properly. Um, so stuff like that's quite useful if you want to look back at it. I've got a question here. I don't know how interactive you guys want to be, but if one of you could try to shout out the answer. Um, you've got a 13 year old boy and he's got a painful right groin. He's previously had knee pain, um, which was found to be normal. Um, there's a bit of shortening on one leg. He's got limited movements um, and pain as well as some external rotation. Um, what do people think will be the most appropriate investigation here? Is it a hip radiograph looking for a slipped upper femoral epiphysis? Yeah, so crucially also in that frog lateral view, um, sometimes they might just ask you about what the, you know, what the view is that you want, but yeah, that's right, thanks. Um, so the key things to pick up on there is the fact that it's, for all these Sufis, um, it's the fact that it's an adolescent boy um, and they'll often try and mention that, you know, he's obese and started trying to play sport again or things like that. They don't tend to go the kind of, you know, bone disease metabolic route. Usually they keep, you know, that key kind of young adolescent boy bit, bit overweight. Um, and also that internal rotation is quite a crucial kind of sign. Um, in terms of the imaging, you can see it's quite obvious that literally the top of the um, femoral head just seems to have slipped off. Um, it's usually quite classical on an image. Um, so kind of in the same group of conditions, you've got Perth disease, which is more, um, it's kind of an idiopathic cause. You end up with this bone degeneration um, and then eventually it starts to actually reform again. You get all this remodeling over time. Um, the age group for this is slightly different, even if the presentation is still with that kind of limp and painful hip and knee. Um, and the treatment there is surgical and again, quite stereotypical. Um, radiographic images for that. Um, so it's good to be able to differentiate those two. Um, so one that's more of an emergency is septic arthritis. Um, they've got a nice little set of criteria here, but basically you're just saying, do they look like they have an infection? And is it related to the hip um, in those criteria? And basically the more criteria you have, the more chance there is that it is septic arthritis. Um, you want to act really quickly here um, and getting on with those antibiotics. But it's quite important to remember to get any cultures before you give those antibiotics. That's something they can ask about with this. Um, so moving to kind of the other age end of the spectrum, um, you've got osteoarthritis of the hip. So it's just good to remember those four radiographic signs of osteoarthritis. You've got three on shown on the image here. The fourth one would be osteophyte formation. Um, Otherwise, you know, the history and stuff is all there for you. Um, and yeah, it's e another one that's good to pick up on the imaging if they were to give you any of that. So another question here, if someone can shout out the answer again. Um, you've got a 33 year old footballer. He's got sudden right knee injury during a football game. Um, you can you internally rotate his foot and you notice a clicking feeling. What's the likely cause? Yeah, exactly. Um, so the kind of important thing that they're trying to get you to pick up on here is that clicking feeling when you're doing um, that internal rotation. But also, again, they'll often be really stereotypical and it will be a footballer who, when he tried to turn, suddenly felt um, this intense pain. So got to the anatomy there. Sometimes they'll ask you things about that. Um, I think they asked us about the shape of the meniscuses so that the medial one is more of a C and the lateral one is more circular. Um, so that's useful to remember. And again, it has a very stereotypical history that they try to be, you know, quite basic with their questions. Um, in terms of treatment, the there's two kind of approaches. So you've got either you just resect the part that's kind of torn away um, but if it's large, you might want to suture it to kind of preserve that cartilage because often you know, these people are quite young. Um, you don't want to be compromising that. Um, so, yeah. So the kind of injury that often comes with those meniscal tears can be ACL tears. Um, so it's again useful to remember the anatomy here for MCQ questions and another stereotypical history with very rapid swelling. But 
sometimes they try to differentiate it from meniscal tears by saying that actually they were able to still use the knee and they were kind of walking around thinking oh this still hurts but I'm going to try kind of get on with it um but yeah that's kind of the info for ACL tears um patella dislocation is quite niche um but something something to remember just in case um that you'd be using that patella apprehension test I think I mentioned in the OSCE thing is that you're trying to look for that propensity to dislocate rather than an actual test for did it dislocate so moving on to the upper limb carpal tunnel syndrome they like to bring up um because it's got you know such a nice classical presentation um you remember what those tinnels and phalanx removers maneuvers are because they may describe the test rather than say tinnels was positive or whatever um and also that you've got the three different kinds of treatment um, that you sort of move through stepwise. You tend not to just be like, oh, we'll just go for surgical, make sure it's fixed. You'll just start conservative. That doesn't work, move on to medical. That doesn't work, move on to surgical. Um, another one that may be worth knowing that anatomy, knowing those nine tendons that go through the um, compartment, um, just because that's another sort of easy ortho question um, for them. Trigger finger um, is a bit niche. Often they'll ask um, what you're actually releasing if you do surgery. Um, things about the timings, like um, when to actually move on to move on from conservative therapy. Um, and again, this has a really typical history, so it's quite nice um, to just get that in your heads. Um, so frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis is when you get that kind of as diagram shows thickening of the shoulder capsule that can make it really hard for um specific movement and this is another one where they'll give you hints with the kind of person that they talk about in their vignette it will be a woman who is you know 50 something years old 60 something years old um they like you to know that these defined stages um the time periods for each one because it it may be a question of like what will you say um coming next for this patient if um, she's noticed now the pain is less, but actually she can't move it so well or, you know, something like that. So get those kind of time periods in your head. It's quite useful. So what about this one? It's a supraspinatus tendonitis. Yes, it is. So sometimes people are thrown off by the fact that it's this 54 year old woman who like i've just said um classically adhesive capsulitis but yeah it's the supraspinatus tendonitis so a kind of impingement from that tendon inflammation um but it's good to remember that's not the only cause of impingement you've got the calcifying form and osteoarthritis of that joint um this is more of a kind of osteo thing that will come up but it doesn't mean they won't ask things like where's it most likely to be most painful um and the age groups can be quite telling for who has these sorts of injuries. And so this bit's a little bit more useful again for the OSCE, um, but just knowing that that management um, has various different stages again, as with all the ortho stuff, ortho stuff, you've got conservative, getting a little bit more involved with steroid injections and then surgery if it's you know really not helpful. Um, but yes. And what often comes with those is rotator cuff tears. So just remembering those muscles, um, but remembering the kind of likely cause based on the age. Um, so as an older older patient, they've called older 40, but it may well be quite a bit older than that. It can just be due to degeneration and then those muscles not being very well developed anymore. Whereas in younger patients, it's trauma from you know sporting injuries as with a lot of these cases. Um, and then, yeah, the kind of management in partial versus complete will often come up as a question. And that's the end of your kind of whistle, to whistle stop tour. Um, probably already overrun, sorry. <laughs> oh no, just about in time, excellent. Um, do people have any questions or want to go back and look at any of the images, anything like that? Or I can let someone else get on with their presentation. Can I assume that's all good then? I'll stop sharing. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. That's all right. <laughs> hey guys, um, Rob, I'm gonna turn my camera on just so you can see me. 
so um sorry about earlier i literally just had my laptop on mute so that was my bad so um i am doing the ed presentation so let me just share my screen mm-hmm. all right can everyone hear me and see my presentation yeah yeah okay yeah. So um, a little bit like Lois is one, I think the emergency, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we're all aware of this at this point, but emergency medicine is very protocol driven, which is in a way quite good because it allows us to kind of just learn the sort of protocols and that answers a lot of the questions that you might be asked. So half of this resource, to be honest, is just having all of those protocols in one place. If you have got them in notes already, obviously we'll send these slides out like we did previously. Um, and then there's just a few kind of things that um, I and other people we've talked to have picked up from doing the MCQ and the OSCE to an extent that we thought would be worth putting in a presentation, maybe comes across a little bit, uh, you know, just, just as a sort of a little bit of um, um, kind of, yeah, sort of tips and tricks. So we won't, it'll just be 15 minutes or so. I think, I don't know if Robin said at the beginning, we're trying to get, aim to make all the presentations about 15 minutes. So it takes about an hour to go through um, just because I'm sure you're all quite busy. So um, we're just going to quickly go through major trauma, cardiac emergencies, arrhythmias, and then a couple of resource room situations. So in terms of major trauma, then um, I will try and ask some questions. I won't ask too many because it's just kind of sort of slows it down a little bit. Um, but um, I think it is drilled into everyone at this point that we have to take an A, B, C, D, E approach. Um, and that's kind of what they're looking for, but certainly in the OSCE. Um, it's worth mentioning to stabilize, stabilize the C-spine, um, you know, because